supply what do you think or what comes to your mind when you think of supply when i ask this question students generally say supply is what is getting sold supply means the total sales in the market but that is right supply means what is getting sold in the market but supply is not restricted to being what is sold in the market it is something more than the goods or the commodities that are sold in the market supply actually means what a seller offers to sell in the market what he is offering in the market so this is generally what we mean by supply let's see what supply means as a definition its definition is supply is what producers are willing and able to offer now there are three important words in this it is obvious that supply would be from the producers end we have done demand in our earlier videos demand was focused from the point of view of a consumer it is what consumers buy or have the ability to buy or are willing to buy but supply comes from the producer's side so supply is what producers are willing and able to offer i said there are three important words first is willing second is able and the third word is offer as i've already explained you supply is not what is actually getting translated into sales but it is something which is being offered for sale it may or may not get sold if it gets sold it will add up to the sales of the producer if it does not get sold it will remain in the stock of the producer or the seller yet in both cases we'll say that the goods are being supplied so first the producer should have the willingness to offer it for sale second the producer should be able to sell those goods now what do you mean by ability here ability of the producer to sell the goods ability of the producer is that there should be no restrictions on sale the goods should not be encumbered by any charges he should be free to sell them there should not be government regulations or encumbrances or charges on the goods he should be able to sell them first he should be willing second he should be able to sell them or offer to sell them and finally it is the offer and not the actual sales supply is what you offer for sale at various prices when we talk about the concept of supply it is similar to the concept of demand in demand we said demand is what consumers are the quantity of goods the consumers are willing and able to buy at various price levels so demand is a function of set of price levels and the quantity demanded against those prices in the same way supply is also a set of price levels and the quantity supplied at those levels for example if you are talking about the supply of let's say mobiles cell phones now if the cell phone is priced at rupees 5000 the quantity supplied for it is 1000 
that means 1000 units are being sold at a price of 5000 if the price increases to 10000 the quantity supplied increases to 4000 if the price is increased to 15000 the quantity supplied now increases to 10000 when the price is 20000 the quantity supplied increases to 20,000. Now, what we can see here is that different number of goods are being supplied. Different amounts or quantities of the cell phones are being supplied at different price levels. At each price level, there is a quantity that is being supplied corresponding to it. So supply is not just the number of units supplied at a single price level but it is the unit supplied at various price levels during a given time. Now it is very important to express supply given during a period. In the example given by me, I've said the mobiles are being supplied. In the example that I just gave, I said 1000 units of mobiles are being supplied at a price of 5000. 4000 units are being supplied at a price of 10,000. 10,000 units at a price of 15,000 and 20,000 units at a price of 20,000. But during how much time? In a day? In a month? Or in a year? It is imperative to suffix the time period when we are stating supply. Otherwise, the meaning of supply becomes incomplete. So, supply is nothing but the amount of goods, the quantity of goods that the producers are willing and able to offer at various price levels and during a given period of time. Now let's understand what are the properties of supply. First property. I'll just erase this. The first property is supply is offer for sale and not actual sale. We've already discussed this point. Supply does not mean the goods that have actually been sold. It is just the goods that have been offered for sale. Now when the goods are offered for sale, some of them may get, some of them may get sold, but the others may remain unsold. In both the cases, we will say that the goods are being supplied. The second property is supply is a flow concept and not a stock concept. By flow concept, we mean that supply is expressed in the unit of time that is particular commodities per day or number of units per week, number of units per month, number of units per year. So it is always expressed in the unit of time, x amount of units per x amount of time. When any variables when any elements are expressed in the unit relative to time, we say that concept is a flow concept. What is the stock concept? Stock concept is the absolute number of that concept, absolute number of that element or variable. Now I'll just give you an example. We as accounts uh, we as commerce students study accounts. 
in accounts we have prepared final accounts in final accounts there are two things first is the trading and pnl account and second is the balance sheet please understand that we prepare a balance sheet as on a particular date whereas we prepare the trading and pnl account for the whole year taken together so when we prepare a balance sheet as on a particular day those figures are absolute figures which are outstanding as on that date so balance sheet we term it as stock concept however profit and loss account gives us profit and that profit is for the year so what we are doing here is we are expressing profit in the terms of time that is x amount of profit per year so profit and loss statement becomes a flow concept likewise gdp of a nation gdp of a nation is a flow concept we tend to measure how much the gdp has increased how much the gdp has fallen with relative figures of the last year maybe with relative figures of the past decade so gdp is also expressed in terms of time that is gdp for the year 2000 gdp for the year 2011 gdp for the year 2012 and so on so here also supply is a flow concept we express supply at various price levels and for a time period so supply becomes a flow concept 